Hello and welcome to the brand new legendary series Kyosho Phantom Build by RC Empire and welcome to episode 5, the motor fitting and what motor we have here for you today. Quickly before we start, do head over to the RC Empire website at www rcempire.co.uk which will be coming in January 2021 and will be huge so do head over and sign up for updates we are pushing to release it before Christmas but I don't think we'll quite make it anyway let's get straight into it and here we are with our chosen motor the Kyosho Le Mans 490 30 turned brushed motor. Now this is actually the brushed motor Kyosho recommend in this model and you can see all the recommendations they make in episode one where we flicked through the manual. On the back here, you can see some of the specs including weight, dimensions, no load RPM at 7.2 volts, which is 15,400 RPM. And for what it is, this is a pretty reasonably priced motor coming in at around 45 pounds. Now, if we take a look inside, Look at that. This is a proper classic brushed motor. And we haven't bought a motor that looks this nice for years. And this is going to look incredible paired up with the Phantom. Now, as mentioned, this is a 30 turn brushed motor, which is actually quite high. But this Phantom kit comes with a 21 tooth pinion. So it will be really interesting to see what kind of speeds and performance this gives us. We were going to go with a brushless setup, but we couldn't resist a brushed motor with this proper classic setup and actually just like the Ultima build we did I think this is going to give us a huge amount of torque where we will definitely be able to play around with the pinion size a bit and get a bit more speed from it which will be perfect and really easy to do as with most Kyosho models so do watch out for that but let's go ahead and fit it in and I'm actually hoping we won't need to take anything apart to fit it, which should be the case. The motor should be easy to insert and remove if need be, just in case you are racing one of these and need to do a quick motor swap halfway through the day. And as expected, it simply slots in really nicely and easily. And you can neatly trail the wires up and all the way around here to meet with the ESC wires that we installed in the last episode. Now once the motor is in, you can actually fit the bottom screw in without taking the wheel off and add a dab of Loctite before screwing it in because motor screws do have a tendency to come loose. However, you might as well remove the wheel as well because that is going to give us access to firstly this open diff here which we'll be keeping an eye on as we hit the track but also it will give us access to the motor shaft to attach the pinion and the top adjusting screw for the motor. Get the pinion that comes with the kit and screw it onto the shaft making sure that the grub screw sits on the flat face of the shaft and again add a dab of Loctite to the grub screw blue Loctite, not the red one, which is way too strong. And then before tightening it up, make sure that the pinion and spur gear are aligned and you've got maximum surface contact between the two. And then you can go ahead and tighten up the grub screw. Then the fun part, the meshing of the gears. Now this is shown in the manual using the paper method, meaning the gap between the pinion and the spur gear should be paper width. Normally, I don't even use the paper, so I'd normally push the gears completely together and then back the pinion off just a touch, just so that there's a tiny, tiny tenth of a millimetre gap and you see a tiny, tiny bit of movement between the gears, just like a micrometre gap. But just use the paper method because it's much easier and foolproof. So, get a piece of paper, not a thick one and not card, put it in between the gears 
and simply squash the gears together. Then tighten up the top adjustment screw. Now you can just see that the channel that the top screw sits in allows the motor to pivot around the bottom screw moving the pinion closer or further from the spur gear. And that on this model is how you mesh the gears. And that's it. Once everything is in position, make sure all the screws are tight and make sure that as you tighten up the screws, the motor doesn't move again, making the spur to pinion interface too tight or too loose because that will lead to a stripped spur gear. But there you go. The powerhouse is in and ready to go. All that's left to do now is put the wheel back on, connect your cables, and actually I removed this plate here so that I could pull the wires up and around the motor nicely and feed them up along here without removing the whole motor again. But hopefully you won't need to do that. Neaten everything up and use some zip ties or whatever you need. And then all that's left to do now is to make sure everything is working with a little static test and our first power up. So here we go. And a little note, do not leave the on and off switch wires like that wrapped around the chassis. We will tidy that up and show you exactly how we tie them in in the next and final summary videos. And actually straight away you can hear that the pinion and spur gear sound really tight and you can just hear that screaming and that will be screaming all the way around the track which is not what you want. So we're going to back the pinion off a tiny bit. And there you can hear straight away that it's much better. Now as with any model don't just take this straight out to the track or field and tear it around until it breaks. Do a few static tests, make sure everything is moving freely, nothing is binding or grinding where it shouldn't be. Take it for a few laps and then bring it back in just to give it a once over. And once you're happy with everything, then you can give it hell. But that's it, all the electronics are now in. All that's left to do, as you can see, is a quick episode showing you exactly how we fitted and adjusted the chain, which was easy to do and took minutes, but only once you know how to do it and what you're looking for. So do watch out for that before we hopefully hit the track once lockdown is over. And that's it. Please do head over to the RC Empire website at www.rcempire.co.uk which will be coming in January 2021 and will be the biggest hobby site on the planet, benefiting everyone. And we would love you to be part of it. So do go over and sign up for news and updates and keep an eye out for the release. But that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and see you soon. <laughs>